Hello and welcome, I'm Peter and thanks for joining me today as we review a video by YouTuber Gutsick Gibbon. Today I'm going to be checking out this video from her Bite Size Bus series, which is where she tries to take a scientific topic and show how young earth creationism is invalidated by it. Well, I'm going to look specifically at the video entitled Stone Tools Preclude Young Earth Creationism and ask the question, is that really true? Gibbon is one of my favorite YouTube channels, not only because it primarily talks about hominins and I'm a nerd, but also because it is always intellectually stimulating. After watching Erica's videos, I always come away thinking about it perhaps a little bit differently, and so I really enjoy that about the channel. But today I want to talk about this particular video and why I disagree with Erica's argument that stone tools preclude young earth creationism. So let's listen to her argument. Today we're discussing how stone tools entirely preclude young earth creationism. Yes, really. In a 2015 paper titled Lithic Landscapes, Early Human Impact from Stone Tool Production on the Central Saharan Environment, anthropologists attempted to tally up just how many stone tools were scattered across their study site. Working in a remote location in southern Libya, researchers took surveys from hundreds of one or two meter square plots. From the tens of thousands of artifacts found in them, they estimated a minimum density of 250,000 stone artifacts per square kilometer is present in this portion of Libya. This is a total of over 150 trillion with a T stone tools and artifacts over the course of 2 million years across the African continent. So how exactly did they get that number? The researchers surveyed other published estimates of stone tool densities in other areas of Africa as well. For example, some parts of the Nubian desert averaged 12 million artifacts per square kilometer. They also calculate expected stone tool production given certain assumptions about the population size and stone tool use over time. Overall, researchers estimated that stone tool production across the entire continent of Africa has resulted in an average of 500,000 to 5 million artifacts per square kilometer. Africa is roughly 30 million square kilometers in area, so this would put the total number of stone artifacts between 15 and 150 trillion. So can you see what the issue may be here? Now, calculating the total number of stone tools in Africa is actually pretty complex. And there's a lot of complicating factors. One of those is that stone tools can exist at multiple archeological levels. That is, not all of them are right at the surface, they're buried underneath the ground. So to actually get an idea of how many stone tools are, you would need to know the average number of stone tools per cubic meter of sediment and then how thickly this sediment is laid down throughout all of Africa to actually calculate a number like that. But we don't have data like that. Instead, what the paper tries to do is estimate how many stone tools were produced based off of surface findings and based off of population size and things like that. Now the paper records a number of different sites at which the density of stone tool accumulation is known. We can see here that we have a site called Ambicelli, um, some from the Zebra River Valley, Kubi 4, the Nubian Desert, and then also Misak, where the majority of this team's particular work was done. But when we look at this, it's obvious that the numbers are very different. Some sites have a much greater concentration than others. For example, Ambicelli, where you've got 19,000 lithics per square kilometer. And then you go all the way up to the Nubian Desert, where there's anywhere from 1 to 12 million lithics estimated to be per square kilometer. And when we would multiply those towards the square kilometers in Africa, we can get very different numbers. If we use the concentration at Ambicelli, we get 574 billion stone tools in all of Africa. Whereas if we use the numbers from the Nubian desert, we're gonna end up with 181 trillion, which is pretty crazy and even more than the authors of this paper estimate there to be. Why is there this variance? Well, it's because people will spend different amounts of time, there's different population sizes, and therefore, based off of such a small sample size like this, you can't really estimate the number of stone tools in Africa. Also because of the sites which they pick. These are archeological sites, which we already know there were large concentrations of people and therefore stone tools at. In addition, 
We also know from the paper that these are areas where archaeological visibility is very high. And so once again, these are sites where we already knew there was a large concentration of stone tools, and therefore they're not representative of the whole of Africa. And that's why the paper really didn't use these estimates to try to argue how many stone tools there are in all of Africa, because they're simply not representative. Here's an example. This is the fictional continent of Paleologosia. And as you can see, each of the black dots there represents a stone tool and each of the red rings an area which we sampled. If we sampled just a few areas like this and then estimated how many stone tools there were over the entire continent of Paleologosia, we would be very, very wrong. We'd way overestimate it because we were focusing on sites where there's a heavy concentration of stone tools. And at this point, that's basically what we would be doing if we used the stone tool density estimates that I showed above. So if you can't just come up with an average number of stone tools per kilometer squared in Africa, how are we ever going to estimate how many stone tools are in Africa? Well, that's the question that the paper had to answer, and they came up with a solution. Estimate the population size, how many people are living in Africa, and then estimate how many stone tools each person makes. And that is the approach that they took. To calculate the total number of stone tools in Africa, they needed a variety of things. First, the total land mass of Africa, which niftily we have. It happens to be around 30,221,000 kilometers squared. In addition, you need the population density, so how packed people are in this space. And that's where things get a little iffy, and even they have pretty large margins, right? Anywhere from one person in 100 kilometers to one person in 10 kilometers. So quite a range there of possibilities. Thirdly, they also have to know the length of time. How long are these people producing these stone tools for? Fourth, you need to know how many stone tools they're going to make over the course of a year. Fifth, the number of little flakes that are going to fly off the stone tools as they chip them. And then six, how much volume those stone tools take up. Those values could simply be plugged into these equations and you can estimate that there's anywhere between 15 and 150 trillion stone tools in all of Africa. But knowing that there are way too many stone tools in Africa for a 6,000 year time span is easy. Let's go a little deeper and maybe begin to elucidate the meat of why the sheer number of stone tools just really obliterates young earth creationism. The standard young earth view proposes that the stone age was a short period of just a few hundred years in length, with 500 years being the absolute maximum for them. This period spans the time when families allegedly spread out from Babel some 4,270 years ago to about the time of Abraham. So in order to be super generous, let's give young earth creationism 500 years for the stone age and assume that each person is producing an ungodly amount of stone tools in their lifetime. Using the answers in Genesis and general creationist proposed numbers, we get a time span of 500 years with 25 years per generation, 10,000 stone artifacts produced by each person, both men and women, in their lifetime, an average population size of around 100,000 hunter-gatherers slash nomads, and when we run the calculation, we get 20 generations times 100,000 people, giving us 2 million people who produce stone tools. If each person produced 10,000 artifacts during his or her lifetime, then this would result in 20 billion stone total artifacts, or 40 million artifacts generated per year. Now, 20 billion stone artifacts in 500 years is a lot, but this is definitely nowhere close to the 15 to 150 trillion artifacts estimated to be just in Africa alone. To calculate this estimate, they not only needed to know how many stone tools a human would produce in a year, but also how many years these humans were inhabiting Africa. And this is what really undermines this whole estimate. They assumed to get this 15 to 150 trillion estimate that humans had been occupying Africa for a million years. In other words, to get their estimate, you have to assume a duration of a million years. And although the paper itself isn't arguing against young earth creationism, Erica is. And so she's making a logical fallacy here. She's assuming a million years of humans inhabiting Africa inside of her calculations to argue that the earth is a million years old. She's assuming the premise 
to test the premise, and that just basically collapses the whole argument. So can you see what the issue may be here? So creationists can't math, and they don't want to read. But to know this would require even a cursory Google search, something I am growing increasingly concerned that even professional creationists, just like their YouTube counterparts, simply refuse to do. When Erica estimates the number of stone tools that could be produced in the Earth creationist framework, and then compares that to the number which she believes has been produced, this is all just a ridiculous comparison. Because she is acting as if the 15 to 150 trillion number is an actual value and not just simply based on the assumption that people have been there for a million years. And so no, humans do not need to have produced that many stone tools. So how many stone tools are there really in Africa? I don't know. It's a complex question, as I said earlier, and I'm not even sure that we have the data to actually access something on this scale yet. But what I do know is that this particular estimate is incorrect because it is assuming the very premise upon which the whole question that Erica is attempting to address here is based. Overall, I do not think that stone tools preclude young earth creationism. The estimates which suggest that there are far too many stone tools for a young earth are based explicitly on the assumption that there were millions of years in which people were producing them. And so therefore the argument rests on an assumption the very assumption it is trying to prove. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, make sure to check out Erica's video and also the scientific paper, which are both linked in the description down below. Thanks. The abundance of stone tools in Africa is thus one of the more devastating pieces of evidence against the young earth hypothesis.